Jan, first of all, welcome to the first sunshine of the day on the uh, uh, Friday of the 2011 U.S. Sport Aviation Expo. Now, first of all, let's talk a little bit about the background of what you've been doing, because in the sport aviation power plant arena, you've been at this for a while. Let's uh, give us some of your history. Well, you know, I'm like loved and hated. I get people that are flying my Subaru conversions, and many people have a thousand hours on them, and other people can't seem to get them flying. So the history is like colored, I would say, up through the years. You know, I've been at it. Companies have gone. They've, they've come back. I just always survived, you know, somehow through it all. And it's been 18 years, and my mom wanted me to, you know, fly the airlines, and I went to college for that. Made my way through in a hippie bus and paid my tuition and got all my licenses and went to A&P school and all that. But just just couldn't do the work and driving the, the, the airliners back and forth thing. So I started my own thing and been learning a lot up through the years and a lot of good customers, some bad took all that knowledge of good and bad and wanted to do it like one more time for light sport and I said okay let's let's make a real airplane engine not so much an auto conversion you know let's use something really good like a Honda core and then everything else let's make it as aircraft as we can you know and aircraft mounts aircraft oil system aircraft alternator aircraft style ignition system dual this dual that and and that's what we did what we have here is the Viking engine on an RV-12. We brought it here because we're not ready to fly it. We do have a, a 601 HDS that we're flying, and we actually flew it here last year, and we flew it to Oshkosh, and racking up some hours on that, and that's our test mule. Mm -hmm. But the, the RV-12, you know, I, I wanted an RV-12 on my own, mm -hmm. so this is going together little by little, and uh, eventually it'll fly. And mm -hmm. I don't need it to be, you know, light sport licensed or anything, so I'm hoping I can make it go just a little bit faster with the wheel pants and uh, maybe an empty variable propeller and things like that. But, uh, but mostly, it's, it's, I just think the RV-12 is a great airplane. You know, it's a good combination. Uh, I have had people tell me that they wish they could build it, but that the engine is a little pricey because you have to kind of buy the whole kit then to, together. Uh, but the airplane is very reasonably priced. So that's what we're trying to do. We try to get the, the, the combination, you know, the reasonable priced engine uh, that's still a modern and a good engine in an equally well-designed airplane. So. Now, what are the specs for this particular engine? Uh, give us all the, the data. Well, it's a 1500cc engine. And at basically same RPMs as what you would do if you were cruising or flying in a 912 Rotax. You know, that is the most popular engine. 5800 RPM is, is tops in the Rotax. 5800 RPM is the tops on this. And cruising around 4800 up to 5400. I've said this before, you know, it does sound like high numbers, but... We're at Sebring now, and we have a racetrack in the background. Well, they use the same Honda Fit engine in those cars, and they also use it in their outboard motor, you know. And also, when you take this thing apart and you look at the construction, Honda has, you know, they're just, just, just bulletproof engines, really is. Freedom through control. Cirrus has completely reinvented the personal aircraft and the entire experience of owning a personal aircraft. It's a bold new take on private aviation that we call Cirrus Flying 2.0. You set the schedule. You chart the course. You're in control. What's the weight? It's 178 pounds without any, any liquid in it. So the way it is here, if you took the propeller off it, it, and hoisted it off the airplane, it would be 178 pounds. Fuel specifics? As far as the actual specifics, uh, I'm not 100% sure what those numbers are. I just know that flying it, it is like every flight seems to be 4.8 to 5 gallons an hour when you just average it out. And we have fuel totalizer, and that's what it's telling us. So. Any fuel parameters, any specifics there as far as uh, what you need is, uh, can you run avgas and so forth? Well, you can run avgas, but none of these modern engines really like it. You know, it's no different than if you put it in your car, you would see lead pellets in the exhaust after a while and all that. So what I say is like, you can put it in when you're out flying, going across the country and all that, that's, that's fine. It's not as clean as the auto fuel. But when you get back home, start using auto fuel again, mm -hmm. and then the engine will just be happy. Now, are you providing this as engine only, or are you doing uh, full uh, adaption packages and so forth with the various aircraft that you're uh, at this point targeting this engine for? 
Yeah, that's really the only way. We don't want people to get just a box with an engine, you know. Have to figure it all out. Right. Now that doesn't work. And the nice thing, I would say that the best thing that we did this time around with the design was to take the basic engine and use the modern technology of digitizing the engine, a CMM machine, computerized measuring machine, and get the entire engine into the computer. And then once that's done, you can design anything around it. And like for instance, the C Ray is a everyone like that have one have been call calling us and visiting bringing their planes to our hangar they're just dying to get this engine in there and the reason is that they need a little more than the 912 so they jump up to the 914 but they don't need the turbo because they're not really going high altitude now as i understand it uh, you've got uh, the 750 series for uh, for zenith done right. and the 700s as well the 701. 701. In fact, a lot of those airplanes left out there, like like many. Okay. Even Thailand, we sold like four to 701. Okay. We have a lot of customers, but I mentioned some of them that are a little unique. We've got down in the islands, there's a place that does the Zenith when it floats, they, they train people. The other thing about the LSA and the smaller engines is it's very popular around the world mm -hmm. because maybe not that they need LSA, but they've always been flying two-seat Jodels and smaller planes, and we've always been used to big planes and 200 horsepower. And we're kind of getting to what they're flying. And we're seeing, we get dealerships in Australia and New Zealand and Africa, and so it's, it's a whole different thing. I've never had any money, and I've always kind of slept in motorhomes or in my office and things <laughs> like that. So none of this is about money. I can 100% tell my customers that it's about I do want to have a genuine feeling myself that I contributed in being able to provide the best engine that we can make for the least amount of money so that next year and next year and next year we'll see more and more and more Viking engines flying for people that, that maybe wouldn't be able to fly at all because of the cost involved. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. What's the future for this particular uh, for this block? Do you have any other intentions for an engine series, or is this it for now? This is it for now because this this engine is exactly what I feel the market needs. It has the right weight, has the right power. In fact, it has just a little more power than some of the competitors. And we all know that people want to have two good sized people, a little bit of baggage and everything else. I think this is the way and of course you know branching out into different avenues and it's also a tempting because I'm, I'm kind of a designer at heart and I don't like the business part of it and all that <laughs> but except this I love going to the shows you know it's fun and meeting the customers. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna stay super focused okay. we're gonna make as many of these for the least amount of money at the highest possible quality that we can do. Okay.